Rwandan President Paul Kagame was re-elected in August for the third time with nearly 99% of the vote. He'll serve another seven-year term till 2024 and with the constitution amended could theoretically stay on in power till 2034. While many have praised Kagame for reviving Rwanda after its brutal genocide, especially its economy, others have become increasingly concerned that the president and former rebel leader is turning the country into a dictatorship. Joining me in the arena to debate this are David Himbara, a former advisor to Paul Kagame, who now lives in exile and has become a fierce critic of the Rwandan leader, and in Kigali, Getete Niringabo, a senior fellow at the Institute of Policy Analysis and Research and a supporter of the government. Thank you both for joining me on Upfront. Um, Getete, let me start with you. President Kagame was re-elected in August with nearly 99% of the vote. That's the kind of victory that Saddam Hussein used to get. It's the kind of victory that would make Kim Jong-un blush. No, listen. If it was up to me to allocate percentages of votes, I would have given him, what, 65, 70, 80, 90? I don't okay. know. But it's not something that people decide. It's what happened. What, why did it happen? Because why would people not vote for him? Uh, people never ask these questions. Why would people not vote for him? What's the example? Would they want to be like Burundi, like Kenya? You know the jury is still out in Kenya now, like DRC. So they, they, they voted for him like to maintain stability. Or like the United States. I mean, you have to look at what other votes have happened thus far and look at what results they've given. Okay. Uh, well, let me bring in uh, David Himbaro, who's here with me in the studio. David, whether it was 99%, 90%, 80%, whatever, the point is Kagame won a landslide victory. He is a popular, charismatic president. Whether you like him or not, you can't deny the fact that many, many Rwandans do like him. Elections assume uh, independence institutions, judiciary, the parliament. Uh, so in this case, you have a president that appoints the judiciary, appoints and fires. So he is king of Rwanda. Okay. So I would be surprised if he didn't get, actually, I'm surprised that he didn't get 100%. <laughs> Maybe yeah. next time. Uh, Getete, he's the king of Rwanda, says David. Doesn't sound very democratic. Right, so we've enjoyed 23 years. For the first time in the history, in the post-independence history of Rwanda, it's the first time we've enjoyed 23 years of uninterrupted peace and stability. That means he still enjoys uh, the support of the people. But do you believe the presidential election, Getete, was a free and fair election? I was here. I went to vote. Of course I do. Because the U.S. State I'm, Department I'm said, we are disturbed by irregularities observed during voting. We reiterate long-standing concerns over the integ integrity and transparency of the process. What does that mean, Maisie? What, what it means they're not happy with the way what, the election happened and the 99% result. They're not happy. Maybe if people are not happy, they say, we observed this fact, we observed this incident, observe that. Not being happy is not something we can control. Well, they say, no they, they say they observed irregularities. But let me just put this point to David. Yeah. You used to be a close advisor of Paul Kagame. You worked with him. Yes. So who changed over the years? He changed or you changed? Let me put it this way. 2010, which is when I left, hmm. is a year that changed the entire equation in Rwanda. Opposition leader killed. Media people killed. Uh, attempted assassinations of people who fled. Everything that could go ugly went ugly. And that's when I left. That was not me. Previous to that, it, uh, it, we, it, it was uh, authoritarian, but not that open violence, mm -hmm. really. So that's what made me leave. Getete, yes. It's indisputable, isn't it, that in recent years, Rwanda's come under heavy criticism from human rights groups such as Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, for its human rights record. Even the United States government, close ally of Rwanda, big donor to Rwanda, said in its 2016 State Department report, the most important human rights problems in Rwanda were government harassment, arrest and abuse of political opponents, restrictions on media freedom, arbitrary killings, torture. Sounds pretty awful. Yes. So I will give you an example of uh, Human Rights Watch, for instance. Human Rights Watch just published a report that says people who steal cows and goats in Rwanda are supposed to be shot. And what they also say is that this is Kagame's direct orders <laughs> to, to shoot uh, thieves and, and that kind of thing. First of all, these people didn't steal Kagame's cows. Second, we don't even know if this is true. And third, 
who in his right mind, even people who committed the genocide, okay. have been released and let to go in with, their homes. With respect, their, you, human, don't, you don't like Human Rights Watch, but I didn't quote Human Rights Watch. I quoted the United States government, close ally of the Rwandan government, which said restrictions on media freedom, arbitrary killings, torture, uh, government harassment, arrest of political opponents. Are they lying? Are they making it up? Why would they do that? They're friends of yours. I wonder why they didn't say faking the moon landing and so on. Maybe you're giving me broad st statements. Give me facts. Tell me X was killed, Y was David, there's, there's, David, it's all, it's, it's not specific. It's too vague. He's not accepting. What do you say to that? Where, where do I begin? Attempted assassination of Kayumba Nyamwasa in South Africa. That ended up in court. The people who were hired to kill this man were sentenced to jail, but the court, the judge said that he's sending the wrong people to jail. Okay. The people that should be sent to jail are his, the masters who sent him from Rwanda. From Rwanda. That's a record. Britain, Scotland Yard warned Rwandans, uh, Rwandan, uh, uh, They were being targeted for assassination. Yeah, uh, so uh, as, in, as you live abroad. In Sweden. You live abroad, you're yeah. a critic of Rwanda. Yes. Do you ever fear for your own life? No, yes. Of course, Canadian uh, uh, security organs have to, take an, to keep an eye on me. Everyone who is opposed to this regime, mm. especially the outspoken ones, they are targets. Katata, do, yes. you, do, you, do, do you dispute the fact that a lot of Rwandan exiles, especially critics of Kagame, have ended up either dead or almost dead? I, I dispute this uh, for the following reason. So there's only one man who died who, who was called uh, Karege, and then there's Kayimba Nyamwasa, whose attempt, uh, whose, who, whose ass attempt assassinations have been established. Now, in both cases, there was never any evidence leaking, linking these people who did these things to, uh, to, to the Rwandan government. There was never evidence. We are almost out of time. I want to ask a question about the future. One final question to both of you. Uh, Gatete, thanks to a change in the Constitution, Paul Kagame could now serve as president, theoretically, till 20. 34. He's already been president for 17 years. Do you really think Rwandans want, need, should have another 17 years of the same president? Really? For now, if you ask me today, I think yes. I'll tell you why. They are just like German people. They look around Europe, they look around the world, they see there's a global leadership crisis. They say, listen, we have a bull here. We're not going to let these people go. So if you ask me as of today, we'll talk about that in the next seven years. But as of today, Rwandan people are just like German people, like everyone who's having a, an exceptional leader amid a global leadership crisis. Why would Rwandan people let Kagame go if they see what's happening in Kenya right now, in the DRC, in Burundi, in, uh, in, uh, and so on? David, final question. Do you think Kagame will still be around come 2034? I think he'll be around 77 then. Yes, he will, he will be, uh, at least that's what he plans. And we, we know from the Constitution why he wants to hang on. In the, in the change of the Constitution, they have uh, Article 114, which says that the former head of state may not be charged or prosecuted for crimes, including treason, committed while in office. So you think he's staying on in power to protect himself? Absolutely. And, and this clause that he hopes, so he'll stay in, and then beyond the clause, he, he thinks that well, uh, that will, will, will protect him. If we're all but of course, knowing the history of Rwanda, each leader who came, came violently, and he, lo he, he left violently, well, I, I don't anticipate okay. any being different. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you both for joining me in the arena. That's our show. Up front, we'll be back next week.